David Cameron is bracing himself for ministerial resignations over the new high-speed rail link between London and Birmingham, which will cut a swathe through Tory heartlands. Sixteen Conservative constituencies are affected by the planned route, which is set to destroy some 440 homes. Today, the Transport Secretary, Philip Hammond, has been touring affected parts of the country to hear their concerns and meet residents worried that their homes will be blighted. Our political correspondent, Cathy Newman, has been travelling with him. Well, yes, unless the route gets changed, the bulldozers will move into Tory England. The line goes through four cabinet members' seats, and two of the more junior ministers affected have suggested they'll resign unless they get the route changed. I think having spent the day touring the country with the Transport Secretary, it's fair to say he's in no doubt about the strength of opposition to the high-speed line. Catching the 743 London to Birmingham train with the Transport Secretary is a bit of a sweat. He arrives with two minutes to spare, so we have to make a dash for it. Philip Hammond's expecting a bumpy ride today. He's travelling north to meet people whose homes will be destroyed by the new high-speed rail line. And some of those affected are Conservative MPs. First stop, Stairton, a collection of 17th century cottages in the Tory constituency of Kenilworth. Villagers here feared their homes would be obliterated by the railway, but they'd been given an unexpected reprieve. The new track would originally have sliced right through this pretty Warwickshire hamlet. But railway engineers have now agreed to divert the line, sparing these homes entirely. The Transport Secretary hopes to please residents, not to mention Tory colleagues elsewhere, by making similar adjustments to the route. It's about moving the alignment, a hundred, few hundred metres one way, a few hundred metres um, the other. Even though the railway here has been moved 400 metres, these houses are still blighted. So yes, the house has been spared, but we're going to have to live with it, whether that's noise, smell, dirt, we've no idea. The London to Birmingham high-speed link will allow trains to travel at 250 miles an hour, cutting journey times between the two cities to just over 40 minutes, around half an hour less than now. The route devised by the last Labour government will plough through true blue Conservative heartlands. No fewer than four members of the Cabinet, six more junior ministers and six backbench Tories will be affected. One of those has invited the Transport Secretary to a meeting in Warwick. Kenilworth MP Jeremy Wright is an unlikely rebel. He's a government whip whose job is to keep MPs in order. But he says he's putting his constituents' concerns about the high-speed rail route before his loyalty to the government. What's more important to your constituency or your ministerial job? My constituency has always been most important to me, and I've made it quite clear to my constituents that if I didn't believe I could do my job effectively as their advocate and their representative and simultaneously be a minister, then I would not be a minister. Some of his constituents here today will see their homes demolished. One accused Philip Hammond of raping the countryside. Jan and Richard Kenyon have lived here for 70 years, but their rural idyll will be shattered by the high-speed trains hurtling past them just over their garden hedge. How would you feel if your nest egg has been taken away, your pension has been taken away? We have lived here since 19, 1940. We've lived as a family house here for 70 years. How would you feel if the whole of your house is taken away and we have no value in it? What's our future? Philip Hammond admits he wouldn't fancy the new line in his backyard. But despite the £17 billion cost of the London to Birmingham route, he believes the economic benefits of bringing the north closer to the capital will be worth double that. My ministerial colleagues who are directly affected and have constituencies um, through which this uh, proposed route will run are constantly um, engaging with me. I'm very well aware of the concerns that their constituents, and indeed they themselves, um, have. Uh, and I hope that we're having a constructive uh, dialogue. But he's aware some of his ministerial colleagues are threatening to resign in protest. Well, I can't say whether they'll happen or not. I hope they won't. In Brackley, another Tory seat, it's as if word of the Transport Secretary's tour has got around. Opponents here are out in force. They say the government's hugely overestimated demand for the line. They want it cancelled and the existing track upgraded instead. If this is bad, it's nothing compared to the Transport Secretary's final destination today, a meeting with a Cabinet colleague who's bitterly opposed the route right from the start. Well, that can
cabinet colleague he's on his way to see now is Cheryl Gillan, the Wales Secretary. He'll meet her in her Amersham constituency in the heart of the picturesque Chilterns. He'll be sympathetic to her plight, but ultimately pretty firm, because as he said to me in that interview earlier today, he can make tweaks to the line here and there, but he believes that the route that he inherited from Labour is the most practical one. And I think that's why on this you may well have the risk of ministerial resignations.